is it? Eczema is a chronic inflammatory skin condition. Um, so um, it's it presents itself as uh, something that you can visibly see on the skin. It can be itchy. It tends to be red. It can be on like the inner surfaces of the joints. So like inside the elbows and the backs of the knees. That would be a really classic place where eczema is. But it can occur anywhere on the body. Um, and in some cases of um, child eczema that I've seen, it's just so, it can be so widespread and so severe. And then if it becomes infected as well, then that can add to extra complications there. So I think, as you say, it can go from one of those annoying conditions where you just got itchy raw skin for a little while, if, particularly if you're under stress, but it can go to a really severe degree where you can even be hospitalized when you get infected at eczema. So... But yes, you can do something about it. And it's largely connected to the gut. Uh, and when it comes down to the symptoms, apart from the scratching, what else is going on? You know, what, what other symptoms do people get from it? Or is it just the itchiness? It's itchiness and it's soreness. Sometimes it bleeds, but it's all skin manifestation of eczema. OK. And um, like all of these things, how is it connected to the gut? So I would, any any skin condition that goes eczema, psoriasis, rashes, or forms of dermatitis, everything, I always look at the gut. And it's my belief, based on my experience, that you can't heal a skin condition without first healing the gut. It is that directly connected to it. So with eczema being an inflammatory condition, we need to look at the immune system. So where is the immune system? It's 80, 85% actually within the gastrointestinal tract. So that is the target that target organ we need to be looking at so there's lots of um it um it's a it's quite an allergic condition eczema so you need to be very careful with external factors in terms of things like you know using washing powders and putting certain things on the skin because you're going to have the lower resilience against these things and they could aggravate it there is that aspect of it, but it's coming from the inside. That's where the imbalances lie. So when you talk about uh, just just sidetracking on those topics there, OK, washing powders, mm. what uh, soaps, uh, shower gels, uh, anything you put on your skin anything even like sun creams like um, moisturizers but what but what are you using in replace of those because obviously we all need to wash and we all need to put sunscreen on yeah what so if you've if you have eczema what what stuff is available so it's there's 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 certain things like say sulfates in shampoos for example that are particularly aggravating there's lots of other chemicals they might put in um, different skin creams different lotions that then um, the person suffering with eczema then becomes allergic to or it actually really triggers a condition but that's different for everybody so basically going to like a lower chemical residue um, product would be ideal so for instance instead of using a moisturizer use maybe coconut oil at night time or which right. is much easier to do with kids because they've got a lower surface area of their bodies particularly babies you can just get them out of the bath water and lather them with co you know layer on the coconut oil and it absorbs quite nicely after a bath a um, bit more tricky if you're an adult um, because it can just get a little bit messier because coconut oil tends to stay quite greasy on the skin. But yeah, just basically trying to get the chemical load off. But it does it in two ways because it's the physical interaction of whatever you're putting on the skin with the skin itself that's causing the inflammation. But it's also the, the liver has got to process all these toxins and the skin it's an organ of elimination. So we eliminate waste through our gut, through our bowels, um, through our kidneys, through breathing things out and through our skin. So if there's a problem in the skin, that's one of the four major organs of elimination that's got a problem. So anything that takes the toxic load out of the system will help with anybody with eczema because it's reflective of this, the body trying to get rid of toxins that then come out through the skin. So when you're talking about, so I, I understand what you're saying there about, okay, the skin gets rid of stuff. Are you saying there is a way to support the other elimination paths while you're trying to get rid of eczema? Exactly. And that's where the gut comes in. So looking at the gut and how it absorbs things and how effectively it, it eliminates things and excretes things can have a real impact. So constipation can have an impact on eczema because um, lower excretion rates of things out of the gut means that your toxins hang around in your body a little longer and then they get reabsorbed. So there, there are often connections between people that are suffering from constipation yeah. and those that have eczema. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we've done a whole another clinic actually on constipation. So yeah. you can, if, if that is connected, then you can go and watch that video, work out how to sort out the constipation and then, then come mm. back to here. But mm. um, we know when we talk about those, those uh, you go on these, uh, trying to heal certain parts of the gut, 
when it comes down to eczema, when you've got people in your clinic, what are you doing with them and, and, and what sort of gut regimes are you putting them through? So particularly with children, I always, well, I, I, my inclination is to test rather than guess because it just makes for a shorter protocol of, of, of correcting it really. And so, what sort of testing can you do? So for eczema, I would do a stool test because that is normally where the imbalance lies. I don't think I can remember ever doing a stool test on somebody with eczema who then doesn't have imbalances in the gut. And are these normal tests that you would get if you went to your GP or if you went to, this is a different... No, they're not available on the NHS, only through private doctors or private nutritional therapists. So yes, it does cost, it does cost um, some money, but it's like gold the information that you get from it and it can help and I think the the, te the people that I tend to see in my clinic have been struggling for a long time and are getting to the really desperate end of the spectrum with dealing with this condition so they're normally ready and willing and really begging me so like, we need to do tests we need to know we need to find answers so and then once somebody's gone through that test and you've seen what's going on, what what then happens? What are you doing with them? So, um, so I'm particularly interested yeah. in first the diet, yeah. but then potentially the supplements that you're putting alongside that. Yeah. OK, so let's talk about diet first then. So there's quite often food allergies that go alongside eczema. And sometimes if you eat something, so for instance, children, dairy is quite linked to eczema. So if there's dairy in the diet, it can flare up the eczema. So, I mean, that tells you in itself that that's proof that the how close link the skin is to the gut because if you eat something that aggravates it reflects in the skin so um, it's not always dairy though everybody's completely different and actually because it's quite well known that dairy does affect eczema quite often when people come to see me they've already tried it and it hasn't made any difference so what I do is try and identify what the food allergies are or the food intolerances or if they're able to do an elimination diet straight away because that's the gold standard way of really assessing if food are triggers so um, if there, if we do find a food allergy or a food intolerance, we think, great, okay, so we found a trigger, but we take the trigger away, we've still got to heal the gut. So you need to do two things at once. And what the mistake most people make is to find out what the food is that's aggravating, remove that from the diet, and, and then wonder there. why they're not getting any better. Yeah. But of course, that's just taking a trigger away, but it's not fixing, A, the reason why they're intolerant to that food, and it's not fixing the gut that's then manifesting in the skin condition. So when you're putting them through that process, when you say fixing the gut, I know we've done loads of other content on this, but if somebody's first time watching a gutology video, what are you doing? So we need to address the gut bacteria. We need to look at the imbalances we find in the microbiome. And quite often it can be a depletion. So just quite low levels of things that are growing in the gut. And then we lose the benefits of the immune regulation that that brings. So we find out specifically what areas they are deficient in. And there's sometimes certain foods that can boost that particular type of bacteria. So we use a diet first approach always. But then there might be other things missing, like particularly in children, I often see... Um, a low level of something called secretory IgA, which is an antibody that is produced in the gut, in the mucous membrane there. And if that's low, that can really affect resilience because that is helping to control what the microbiome environment looks like. But it impacts further on the immune system because the antibodies aren't there in sufficient quality to really address any incoming pathogens from the gut. So things get a bit dysregulated and it causes inflammatory compounds to be absorbed from the gut into the bloodstream. And then it triggers eczema in the skin. So, so how can you begin to like, boost that IgA? So there's lots of tricks and a really easy one. And it's just, a, the, I'm just going to mention this as a tip because it's something that I've just used many, many times and I really love doing it. But it's something that you'd want to do under the guidance of a professional. But I actually use larch, larch tree, um, Arabino galactans. Probably not something you've I've heard of. No idea. <laughs> I've got no idea what that is. I thought you were going to say something like a, a hack, like it's lemon juice. I go, oh, that's easy enough to do. Right. But it's something that it just, it really boosts nicely the um, the antibody levels. But where, really where can you gently. Even begin to get that from? So you don't go knock, knocking down a large tree. You just get it in a powdered form. But what, it's like you really, can get it off Amazon? Yes. Right, yeah. You okay. can, yeah. Um, but like I say, I would do it under the guidance of a professional, but it's pretty safe stuff and it just really has a lovely calming influence on the gut and it, um, it boosts the antibodies so that then the gut can self-regulate a little bit better. Right. 
Yeah, okay, yeah. that seems it to It tends to have a really anti-inflammatory effect too, so it can be so calming on the skin to the degree that, you know, I make all these little cocktail drinks for five-year-olds or six-year-olds and say, right, you need to take these powders and have them once a day or twice a day and it'll help your skin. And then it does. But then if they stop taking them too soon, as kids generally sometimes get a bit awkward about um, taking things that they're told to, um, you... They, within a week of not doing it, the skin can flare up again. Right, so okay. it al almost has like a direct impact on the skin whilst it's affecting the gut. Yeah. So it's just something I've found particularly useful. Once you get through those sort of processes, though, and you do kind of m make that healing, it's it's harder to slip back into it. It becomes more of a long term thing because I'm assuming that if you have to take s those things that can be uh, inflammatory, the certain foods that cause problems, I'm assuming in the long term, if you heal the gut, they can even start to have those foods back into their diet. It's not a permanent it's reduction. It's never a permanent thing. And especially with children, I always make that point really, really um, carefully to parents that yes, we might need to alter the diet here. We might want to, we really need to get rid of a lot of the sugars in the diet. We might need to take dairy out. We may even need to take grains out for a very short period of time just to see how the how the body responds. Yeah. But the long-term goal is to then heal the gut, heal the skin and get a diverse diet back again, eating anything they want just in a balanced, healthy way. And what about the role of probiotics in healing eczema? Is that something that you use? Yeah, in almost every case, I would use probiotics for eczema at some point, not necessarily at the beginning, um, but at some point, probiotics would be would be used. And, and again, they work very, very fast for eczema. And are there certain probiotics that you notice work better with eczema than with other conditions? No, no, it's so individual. So it's completely unique for each person, depending on what the imbalances are in the gut. And that's so why the gut address, testing. That's why it's so useful, because yeah. otherwise we're just using generic off the shelf stuff that may or may not work. So, so. If, if you're watching this video or, or you listen to the podcast, uh, you know, as always, uh, the best thing to do is 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 to is go with a science science first approach and, and get tested and really in, in order to do that you need to find a qualified nutritionist that has a connection to a lab if you don't know somebody or you're unsure uh, you can go to the gutology website the link is below uh, and we can help connect you with someone that can do that for you um, and in your clinic when somebody comes into you with severe eczema like what is the hope for them in the long term is it a reduction of symptoms so um if it's been really severe sometimes they can get some scarring from it but we if we can reduce the inflammation and stop that then they don't they don't suffer from it at all so that's always where we're aiming to get and that's actually in children where we most often do achieve that is the real total resolution of the symptoms and does that mean that they, they can completely stop taking medications like steroid creams and yeah, so with sometimes there's, a, in a lot of cases of eczema, there's some underlying reasons um, that come from the genetics of maybe an inability to make some of like the the proteins and things that actually like waterproof the skin barrier. So, you know, we've talked about barriers before, haven't we? Leaky gut, leaky brain, you know, we have leaky skin as well um, as, a, as a possibility. So if you're not able to make the waterproofing agents and the antimicrobial peptides and things that the skin should have intact, then it leaves it more prone to inflammation. So if that is something that genetically you're unable to make sufficiently well, then it just means that you might always need to just take care from uh, making sure you've got a barrier cream on or something like that. But if we can get it to the point where that's all you need to do and, and that's then a it's fine. Cream. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to find out more about this, head online to gutology.co.uk.